Yeah, good morning, uh, good evening, and uh, good afternoon for some. It's uh, actually a global forum, and I must thank everyone who is joining in here for this meeting, because it's a very important one for everyone. Uh, I will also mention a couple of words in Sinhalese as well, because the respondents can can speak in Sinhalese. Um, because api me patangan ne me ita vadagat karyak adhya apne menu in Lanka ve. I think me globally can loke hamatani me vaki ekat swadhi ne mas sahabag me na ayer me meeting ne gat atulat thala inno ayi mane thang egulan teki we recording akla baby. I think api ita ma agya karan no ne me vaki dea api patangan ne kagan. I am a, I am a uh, medical doctor who has also done research and also been a university educator, both in Sri Lanka for a, more than 20 years and in the United Kingdom for another 20 years. So reaching the um, retirement ages, we were thinking how to share our knowledge with the others. And we formed uh, what is called LEADS. LEADS is about learning and educating each other so that people can assess and decide what is best. So basically telling people how to uh, make judgments in Sri Lanka. So we started in a very small scale about three and a half years ago. So now it has expanded and we got uh, regular uh, global contributors, about 300 people. On top of that, now... Um, Solar Village SDG is, is, is actually coming to fruition uh, as a Solar Village SDG recently, but it's been a project that's been there for more than nearly 25 years now. And you will hear about it. So as we go along, and but we together launching this uh, English for Rural Children in Sri Lanka as a volunteer project that can be exercised through uh, voluntary channels uh, to the benefit of the nation. That's what we are doing. So to do that, I need to talk a little bit about the English language, why we want English language. Now, if you see the number of uh, languages we have in the world, if you take the Google Translate, already they are translating 243 languages. And the distribution of those languages, some of those languages, you can see. So the English is actually not quite a, like a language that we're using. We are using English as a tool to communicate between each other. If we can't communicate, then how can we tell anybody what we want or what we do or what we want to do? So, so that is the important thing about English as a tool. English needs for communication, and that also connects people between each other. It's connectivity, and it helps you learn as well from each other what they are doing, what they have achieved, their innovations, their research ideas, etc. And also, people who are looking for employment, English has become a paramount need that is there, particularly if you are going away from Sri Lanka. And even in Sri Lanka itself, now people are looking for English competence for certain jobs. So the English is a tool. It's not a language or a mother tongue that some of our own people are interpreting, saying people should learn mother tongue and not the English as a language. So still there are critics, but I want to tell specifically that English is a communicating tool that is essential for today's life in this 21st century. So that is how we can achieve wider knowledge. If you know wider knowledge, better understanding, then you make better judgment, that is better logic. And if you understand each other very well, then you will be a peaceful and prosperous nation. So that's the ultimate goal. So you all will be contributing for a national course that is very important at this particular time. But I must say that I cannot stop this uh, before introducing Nilmini Rollins. Nilmini is a lawyer, but very much oriented in charitable work, currently based in the UK, very fluent in English and French, but also speaks singular quite well as well. 
So she will talk in a second. But before that, I just want to mention just one thing because something very important happened in Sri Lanka um, just three days ago, and that's this. We had a general election and we had a outstanding win for NPP and also President uh, Kumar Anrukumar Disanayak. Now, what is important to see in this is that Jaffna win by this uh, national party showing is probably the beginning of the end of divisive politics, which has really been the difficult point in Sri Lanka for years and years and years. But it is also our duty to work with the elected politicians. I'm not going to talk anything more about it, but to congratulate the team who has done this work and President, President AKD. And about this thing, there will be a meeting as leads do normally uh, next uh, Sunday. That's all I have to say about it. So thank you for that. So we are working, going to be working in a very different environment in Sri Lanka, working together to increase education in the country. So obviously that is why I thought I'll mention this change in the environment in Sri Lanka just three days ago. So thank you very much. And I'll stop here and I'll invite Nilmini to give a more introduction into this English program. Thank you very much, Nilmini. Okay, thank you very much for that, Chula. Um, I hope you can see the screen, um, all of you. Please uh, say yes if you can see the screen. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, yes, thank yes. you. Um, all right, uh, well, welcome everybody. Um, so we're really delighted that so many of you have responded to our call for volunteer English language tutors. Um, it was actually unexpected to have so many respond positively. It actually shows there's a lot of goodwill um, on the part of so many people who want to give back to the community in Sri Lanka. So I'm really, really delighted to, to see that. Um, so this is actually a collaboration between uh, a social enterprise, which is currently being formed called Social, sorry, Solar Village SDG, um, so the SDG stands for Sustainable Developmental Goals, um, Solar Village SDG, um, and also uh, with Leeds, uh, and Chula Leeds Leeds. Um, and so uh, the social enterprise is, is an independent organization, but we're working together on this Zoom Classrooms project. Um, so that's uh, what this is about, because a number of people emailing and have actually asked who's behind this. So just to let you know that this is part of a, a collaboration between two um, entities. So in terms of this um, collaboration, the Zoom Classrooms is one of many projects that the Solar Village SDG hopes to do. Um, and as I said, it's currently in process of being established, um, but it's uh, it's a non-political organization, Solar Village SDG, and its uh, primary objective is to promote renewable energy in Sri Lanka, using that as a platform to further the sustainable developmental goals. So that's in, in a nutshell, the, the project for Solar Village SDG. And Zoom Classrooms that we are collaborating with uh, with Leeds is, is one aspect of the SDGs. So we floated some ideas and we came up with this proposal. Um, and just so that you're all uh, aware of what we talk about when we say um, SDGs, the UN enunciated 17 SDGs. 17 sustainable developmental goals um, for, for the globe. Um, so it's global goals. And one of the 17 is a quality education for all. And so this forms a part of those um, ambitions. And we are trying to make our small contribution towards that. And so Solar Village SDG hopes to achieve as many of those 17 goals as much as possible within our capacity uh, in a small way, um, starting in a small way, but let's hope we can expand that bit by bit, starting with quality education, but starting with the English language. So that's what this is all about. 
a quality education for all, um, because uh, a lot of people, a lot of um, uh, children um, in the remote areas, especially, don't have access to the facilities. Some of the the private schools or some of the other state schools in in the cities might have. So this is to try and give them access to that. But we're keen to adopt an extracurricular approach um, because having talked to a number of te teachers um, and principals, we have the impression that a lot of focus is on, on achieving good marks and getting distinctions and whatever in exams. Um, but what we want to make sure, as Tula said, is to make um, English a language of communication. It's really important that it's actually used um, and also that learning is enjoyed by the children um, because then that way we establish a lifelong love of learning as well. So um, the Zoom classroom, it's a, it's a concept that came about um, following an initiative that Chula initiated with some principals uh, in the Kalutara district. And uh, they have started a, a, a smart room, if you like, or a, a room where uh, the children in that school have access to computers and the internet and um, and we thought, hold on, this is a fantastic opportunity to give children a window to the world. So even in the most remote areas, if we can get these smart rooms installed, then those children can have access to the whole world through the Internet. So that's what we are hoping to achieve. But we're hoping to achieve that by through the funds that could be generated from the solar village concept. So how will that help? Um, a, a little bit later, we'll explain the solar village concept in more detail. But if you just remember the, the term solar village concept for now, that is a wealth creation method. And Professor uh, Dharma Dasa is very much the, the initiator, the father of that project. And um, he will explain that uh, in a little while. But as a part that will create the income necessary to enable us to expand the smart rooms and hopefully throughout the entire island as well. So that's what this is about. Um, the expanding the smart room concept throughout the island involves, to our mind, creating a model school. So we are hoping that the model school will be a, a particular school that we've been working with and, and an associated school as well uh, in the Kalatara district. Um, they will be the model schools for this project as a pilot, if you like. Um, and the fundraising will be done through the Solo Village SDG. Um, but what, once we've established this model school, we're hoping to replicate it in other uh, remote areas or kind of there is not so remote but I mean in areas where they don't have any electricity where hopefully we can um, try and set this up um, elsewhere as well. So the model school in particular that I'm talking about is the Agamati Mahavidyalaya in Kaluthara and we have a very visionary principal there um, called Pr Prasanga Samarasingha and um, now, together with um, his English um, teacher, Miss um, Neluni Vimalasena, um, she has put together uh, with the principal a, a syllabus for teaching um, English to their kids at an after school club. So the idea is extracurricular club, but an enjoyable session. But so we're there to try and support the work of the teachers during the daytime outside of school. But not, um, uh, but not in a way that um, interferes with their work either. So um, the, we've worked with the teachers to try and formulate this syllabus. It's a syllabus, but there's a lot of leeway, room for whoever is joining this uh, project to try and um, develop it, uh, put their own personal stamp on it, but within this a certain kind of, obviously, a certain um, kind of framework that we will put into place. But the idea is to have a, a framework, but um, the individual tutors might um, enable the thing to actually grow. Okay, so uh, we, we're working in the 
in the first instance with this model school um, in Kalutara, and there's an associated school called Mises College, which is based in Kalutara. It's not the Mises College uh, of uh, Colombo that you might have heard of, but this is a, another school also started by Marie Mises Hingens um, in Kalutara, and we're hoping to support both of these schools with the very visionary principles and plus a, another principal uh, from another um, uh, high school as well. The three of them have actually worked very hard in putting this together. Just to give you an idea, this is the, the room, uh, the smart room, before the visionary principal Prasanga actually um, put this into place along with his colleagues Ajantha and Nadisha. So this is it before so you can see the the state of the room um it's uh, the roof is leaking onto the onto the floor and the, the it was in a not a very good state you can see the room um as it was before um please confirm Okay. All right. So this is the state of the room before um, the smart room was actually put in place. And it was uh, it was possible to put it in place because of some fundraising that was done by one of our, our colleagues, um, a lawyer based in the U US who managed to get a philanthropist to actually help um, provide the funds for this. And um, with uh, guidance from Chula, um, the, the principals actually put in place this smart room it's just about completed and this is the same room can you see the difference um this is what it looks like now and from um the from about the 7th of december um this will be opened um and this will enable these kids to have access to the internet and this excellent room where they'll have all the facilities through lots of computers and so on and so forth so this is what we can achieve if there's a will and there, there will always be a way so this is uh the the vision that we have but in order to raise the funding this is where solar village sdg hopes to, to step in is to create the wealth to enable this to be expanded throughout the island so through this model school, we'll speak again a little bit more about the school later on as well. So um, in order for those of you who have very, very kindly volunteered and really appreciate it to help in this project, um, you don't need uh, English language qualifications, um, but it'll be helpful if you do. Uh, but uh, we're hoping to also in due course set up a train the trainer uh, um, model as well. But um, it might be helpful if you do follow some kind of formal teaching like the TEFL course, Teaching English as a Foreign Language. I understand there are two possible um, uh, options there. You can do the 120 hours or the 200 hours, which is a higher level. But uh, this is up to you whether you want to do that or not. It might give you the good grounding, a good foundation to enable you to teach more effectively. So this is the TEFL course. And uh, I'll just see if I can... Right. So um, this is uh, uh, an experienced teacher. She's um, uh, not a TEFL teacher, but she's an actually qualified teacher. Um, and she shared some concerns that she had with the teaching um, as an English as a subject as such. And I'd like to play that video, if I may. It's a very brief uh, recording, but I'll play that. Hi, I'm Nithme Pereira a student who's produced from government schools in Sri Lanka. And with the experience of completing a special degree in English language and literature and a master's in linguistics from the University of Kalania, a postgraduate diploma in education specialized in TESOL from the University of Colombo, a master's in TESOL from Sheffield Hallam University, UK. I have gone through the challenges of learning English as a second or a foreign language. Also, when I started teaching English to various age groups in Sri Lanka, ranging from teen teenagers, professionals, and undergraduates, and also secondary school students in the Maldives for more than 10 years, I could see these challenges from another perspective, from a teaching point of view. In Sri Lanka, majority of the students' notion of English being just another subject, they are attempting to do away with it, by scoring marks from a paper which basically focuses on reading and writing. 
lack of exposure in or outside the classroom to speak and use the language in the midst of teachers largely using L1, which is Sinhala or Tamil in this context, to explain the lessons. Learning English for fun or developing all four basic skills of the language has become quite challenging. In some areas, lack of facilities and poor economic conditions could indirectly have an impact on learning English. Also, psychological factors such as fear, anxiety, and negative attitudes can contribute to make the situation worse. From a teacher's point of view, time constraints to cover the syllabus and producing results can act as barriers to make the lessons fun-filled and motivating students to, uh, to use it as a language by not confining it just to a subject. Thank you. So um, you can see um, that Nathmi's concern about the teaching of English Hi. language is the fact that it is taught very much as a subject in some countries where the children are just aiming to get the marks and pass the exams get with a distinction rather than learning it, learning it um, first of all in, in an enjoyable way but also in a way that it can actually serve them to communicate so the speaking and the listening skills are, are lacking in, in the current methods that are that are being used in, in some schools. So this is where the after school club could come in handy. And I'm just um, I had a video of uh, of a commentary by a TEFL teacher, um, but uh, for some reason I can't locate it. But so I'll, I'll press on for now, if I may, uh, and share that with you later when I can locate it. Um, so here, um, I just want to share with you the fact that there are lots and lots and lots of resources online. So if there are any English language tutors who volunteered, um, please don't worry about how to teach or what resources to, to use because there's tons of it on the BBC website, for example. Um, for example, there's a, a program called the English We Speak uh, BBC. Um, just to show you very briefly what that's about. Hello and welcome to the English We Speak. I'm Fei Fei. And it's me, Rob. Uh, Rob, are those crumbs around your mouth? Uh, no, I don't think so. Why do you ask? Well, I filled the office biscuit jar with biscuits yesterday and today it's empty. Oh, I see. You think I ate all the biscuits. You do like biscuits. Hold on, what's that in your pocket? Uh, well, they're biscuits. Caught red-handed, Rob. You are the biscuit thief. My hands aren't red. I'm not worried about the colour of your hands. It's what you were doing with them. So when someone is caught red-handed, they are discovered doing something wrong and there is no doubt. So, Rob, you've been found out. Uh, yeah, well, I can explain, uh, but let's have some examples first. This is the Hello, English and Speak with me, Faith Faith. Well, and it's me, Rob. Well, Sorry. <laughs> so that's just an example of the resources that's available uh, online. Um, just to let you know that there's a lot more, um, not only on the BBC website, but there are tons um, elsewhere that are very, very useful for different levels as well. Now, on to something else. One of the, the programmes that we want to put in place is uh, an online book club. And um, here we have a very young author uh, who wrote a book called The One They Have to Fear. Um, his uh, uh, Sri Lankan origin, um, and he wrote the book at the age of 12. It was published recently. Uh, he's now 15 years old, and he has actually agreed to a session where he could enable these young kids in Sri Lanka to meet the author. And because it's a young person connecting with uh, young people in Sri Lanka, I think that he might have more success than some of uh, us older people, the, the older generation trying to connect uh, with uh, with young, young children in Sri Lanka. So I'm hoping that this um, 
online book club will enable a dialogue, enable children to speak without inhibition with another young person. So if there are any volunteer teachers amongst you who are students, who are young people, um, maybe university students or doing your GCSEs or A-levels, um, because we have had responses from all different um, ages, age groups uh, and different walks of life, um, it may be that the younger um, people in, in the uh, audience might wish to participate in this online book club because following the reading then uh, it'll be possible excuse me it'll be possible for you to actually have a dialogue with these kids and try and get them to participate because speaking and listening skills are what's most lacking according to some of these teachers okay so there are free resources online for that as well but i just try to calculate roughly how much it'll cost for us to put this in place. Just take this particular book, for example, it's just uh, about nine pounds. Um, so if we were to purchase 15 books, um, those 15 books could be shared to um, uh, a piece. So you might have 30 children in the after school club who might be able to follow a, a young reader, um, in this case, maybe even the author, reading out except for the whole book on online. Um, and then they could have a discussion at the end of three paragraphs or three, three um, chapters. There, there could be a, a dialogue between the, the two parties and that will encourage the children on that side to actually speak. But it's really important that the, the children on, on the other side in Sri Lanka are super Supervised. So this is why we have certain time constraints for the initial programs um, They're at a particular time um, so that uh, there's supervision at that end. But in due course, what we're hoping to do is to enable access to kids um, from wherever. So whether they're at home using their parents' mobile phone or their parents' laptops, if they've got one, um, or, or not just confined to the Zoom classroom. But for that, we need to have lots of other things put into place. We Obviously, we're dealing with children. Therefore, we have to have certain safeguards in place as well. Um, so this is why we've asked in the questionnaire that we've put forward to please provide referees and to make certain declarations. Oh, here, here it is. This is the the video on the of the experience of the TEFL teacher. Um, I'm just going to play that as well because this is somebody who's qualified as a teaching English as a foreign language tutor. So um, Sylvie will share her experience with you now. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. My name is Sylvie Hudson. I'm uh... French teacher and English teacher. I live in the UK with my British husband and my two daughters. And uh, 20 years ago, we've been living for a year in uh, Colombo. And I met uh, Father Tissa Balazonia, who was looking after children. And I was visiting them from time to time, but I couldn't communicate with them because they were not speaking uh, English. And so I decided to do the TFL diploma uh, to be able to, to teach. And uh, I went on to the TFL website and it was, I did it online. It was very user-friendly going through all the grammatic conjugation, idiomatic expressions. Uh, planning the lessons and uh, there were very good feedbacks the teachers were amazing and there was also a, a good chat you know it was 20 years ago but it was working already very well so here we are thank you for listening and I look forward to meeting you Thank you. Um, so that was uh, Sylvie's experience of doing the TAFL course and uh, teaching as a teacher of, uh, of English as a foreign language. Um, as she said, it's, it is really quite user friendly. And so if any of you are encouraged to 
try and do that course, uh, please do. But as I said, it's not compulsory for the purpose of um, running these after school clubs. Um, but there are lots of other resources. For example, if you want to teach youth and adult learners at B1 level, which is quite a high level, there are lots of resources for that as well on this cambridgeenglish.org um, website. So there's plenty of resources available. What we're asking is, we have developed a Google questionnaire. Um, we're asking those of you who would like to participate to please complete that questionnaire. That questionnaire is embedded in a Word document that we've circulated. And if you can please complete and send it back by the 30th of this month, by, by the end of this month, so you've got another couple of weeks to do that, um, that'll enable us to try and um, get uh, the enough information, capture enough information to enable us to organize things. Um, please do note that um, all of us are also working as volunteers. We have our day jobs as well, um, so which means that um, we might not be able to work as quickly as we'd like because we have we are juggling other commitments too. Um, but we appreciate that you too are giving your time very generously for this initiative, and we appreciate that uh, there are certain restrictions on what you can and you can't do. So we, we're really much mindful of that as well okay um this is what what we're hoping to do is to establish this step by step so although we are quite ambitious in our program we are going to have to do that in a managed um, carefully managed way um, to make sure that we've put in certain safeguards and it's organized and it's presented in a way that the kids can access it um, quite easily. So in order to organize ourselves, what we're hoping by the end of today is to persuade you to actually come on board with us more fully and to actually, um, uh, if any of you have certain skills, organizational skills, IT skills, we're hoping that you'd be persuaded to join us uh, a little bit more kind of on, on a more permanent footing. And for that, we're trying to recruit four roles for for four roles and if there's anything on here that you think you might like to um, help out with please do come forward please um, email the email address at the bottom of this um, please um, use this email going forward as opposed to the email um, address that I've used to write to you before um, so that I can keep my work and and this work separately as well so here uh, we're looking for an online English coordinator with IT skills and good organizational skills. That is one of the most urgent recruitments that we hope to make. Um, we also need um, quite urgently an online education, a general coordinator, again with IT and organizational skills. So if you if this these two roles really speak to you, please come forward. We would really welcome that kind of su support. We're not expecting you to give up too much time. We anticipate it'll take between two to three hours per week um, initially uh, maximum and um, if it grows uh, and, and it becomes uh, too unwieldy for you to manage with your other commitments we'll understand we'll try and get assistance from other people as well okay so we're hoping it'll grow organically um, we're also looking for an online science stroke IT coordinator because we don't want to stop with the English. We want to expand it to other topics, other subjects as well, notably science and IT as an online tutoring um, option. So, um, but for the moment, the focus is on English language, but we hope to expand it to these other subjects. Another topic that we really want to try and instill is um, ethics. And this is quite important um, in uh, to try and encourage children from a very young age to understand what professional ethics are, what ethics generally are. This is not about morality, but it's about um, the ethics in, in in a working context, in in a citizenship context. Context. So, um, if there are people who've got the relevant skills, please do come forward. Please email this address at the bottom here. I'll be very grateful for your support. Um, so that's all I want to say in terms of the English language and the Zoom classrooms. I put into the chat a little agenda um, for this uh, for, for today, for this session, basically saying that we'll first talk about the English language, then we'll talk about the broader topics um, and uh, that so, uh, the Solar Village SDGs got in mind, and then we'll have a 
Q&A session, uh, which will be managed by Saroj Pathirina. Um, but uh, we want to go through these presentations first. Once we've come to the end of it, we'll have a Q&A session. Please put your questions into the chat, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, not the chat box, into the Q&A box on Zoom at the bottom of your screens. Um, if you um, hover your um, uh, your cursors, you'll see that there's a Q&A um, question area and I can see that four people have already raised some questions. We will deal with them once we've finished all the, gone through all the presentations. We've allocated some time for that. Okay. Um, so now I'd like to share a different um, presentation and that is one relating to the um, Solar Village SDG, the Sustainable Developmental Goals. Um, bear with me one second. Um, I'll go through that. Uh, but at the beginning of this one, there is actually a, a, an interview that was conducted um, of Professor Dharmadasa. And uh, Professor Dharmadasa is the, the, the initiator, the, the person who piloted this uh, solo village concept many years ago, going back to 30 years. And um, I would like to share that link. If I have trouble with this link, I'm hoping that my colleague Sanindu will step in. But let me try and get this um, going. There we go. I'm there to introduce you one of the Sri Lankan experts in uh, renewable energy, Professor I.M. Dharmadasa, who has been doing a wonderful service to Sri Lanka over the last 30 years or so. Good day, Professor. Good afternoon, Saroj. So we are talking today about your charitable project to Sri Lankans, which is called Solar Village. What is a solar village? In Sri Lanka, there are so many villages. So I was thinking, how to use solar energy to develop these people, reduce poverty, and also climate action. So in this project, we empower a given selected community. We don't give things freely to people. So what we do is we select about um, one or two or three cluster of villages, about 1,000 inhabitants in it, and then uh, look at their issues and select a solar solution. What is what is the solar solution? First of all, we find a wealth creation method for them because you can't reduce poverty without uh, income to that community. So we have used three things. The first one I used was uh, solar water pumping and distribution. In the past, they were using those funds to buy imported diesel to pump water. When we had uh, solar water pumping, all that money was saved in the account for the community. The second method we use is we install a solar roof and then connect it to the national grid using net plus method. So the community uh, get the monthly income from the CEB. So that is the wealth creation part. The third method we use is solar water pumping for drip irrigation, for agriculture, for food production. So they contribute to the common VDC plot. VDC is the Village Development Committee. We always select the village cluster, create a wealth creation method, and then form a VDC with about 50% responsible females as well. Then we guide the VDC to manage these funds for various development projects within the community. So that is the concept. Why are you so particular about having 50% of women? Because if we have all men in Sri Lanka, uh, they can do these funds for various other things. And also we need to be fully transparent as well. I mean, today the Sri Lanka is in this uh, situation because a lot of things has happened in the wrong directions. And we want to uh, train people to do things in a transparent way. So how do you get the initial investment? to create this uh, solar village? <laughs> that was a difficult thing because uh, I designed this project. It was in my head. I was trying to raise funds. It was difficult. The first one we started in 2008. For that, of course, I funded myself. And for the others, I raised funds using uh, two charities in UK, Helisaran and APSL. And also there were personal donations, and also a solar company in Sri Lanka 
also donated a five kilowatt solar roof now and also writing proposals to funding bodies. I think the donations are very welcome at this stage. Later on, we will work with the government so that we can add this project to the national development program because we can't develop a country with charity money. At the moment, we have established five. We are establishing four more. And then Village. we have nine solar, villages. nine solar villages. We have seen beautiful benefits. I understand that uh, the latest solar village also has come into effect a uh, couple of days ago, right? Yes, this one was uh, funded by the APSL uh, in Madiava village. Uh, we installed the solar roof 10th of uh, November. So we raised funds using a GoFundMe uh, platform and also using a raffle. Professor, what kind of investment are we talking about? So to create a solar village, uh, how much money initially is needed? And also, can anybody contribute? Yes. When we started to install a 5 kilowatt solar roof, it cost about 15 lakhs. We installed a 7 kilowatt solar roof in Nocha. It cost about 18 lakhs. Since this is a new technology, cost is coming down now. 5 kilowatt solar roof is between 10 and 12 lakhs. In fact, a couple of days I heard one company is doing for 9.5 lakhs. So the cost is going down. How many more you have in the pipeline? Last five solar villages we have done within 15 years. Slowly, we had to learn a lot. And this year we are doing four in one time. One UK family is sponsoring some of the solar villages, APSL sponsoring one. There is one more with the sponsorship of a Sri Lankan PV company. At the moment, I'm also writing a proposal to Australian aid. My plan is to apply for eight solar villages. You know, you have to write five or six proposals to get one successful one. So uh, if it comes out, uh, we can do another eight in the near future. At the same time, we will speak to the government as well so that we can do this with the government support as well as a national development program. So what are the benefits uh, to these villages by creating these solar villages or solar roofs? We try to enhance education by improving their nursery, usually primary school, library and so on. So that way we enhance the education within the community for children. And we also do things to improve the environment. How do we uh, develop the environment? We have uh, Shramadana, those are voluntary work. To, for tree planting and beekeeping, uh, various voluntary work for improving roads, uh, etc. So these are the kind of things we do to improve the environment within the community. And also for climate action, uh, we use clean energy using solar without carbon dioxide emission. And also we absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere by uh, growing more trees. So this way, we this project is very important for three things. We improve the education, improve the environment, we have climate action, and all these things are useful for the sustainable development of that community. What are the benefits we have seen? I will uh, highlight one or two benefits we have seen. The In the first pilot solar village, we saved the primary school from closure because it was in a difficult area. Teachers didn't want to go. Student numbers went down to 20. Government decided to close it in 2007. That is why we started the first one there and we saved that school. Now it is doing extremely well. It has the electricity, water, computers, and it is doing, it is producing 60% of year five scholarship results. And now it is performing at the top three in the region. Wow. So those are the benefits. And also in Nochia Solar Village, they purify water and distribute to surrounding eight villages for a very small fee. That way they get the income and also it is a service to these people because the kidney diseases are spreading in that area. So once we give clean water, there are no new cases coming out. So those are the benefits. And with these benefits, and also they save a lot of money within their account. They have built a community, a whole, 
a new one. Now they are building an office and a library. Can you see when you put these people together, they do wonders. This is the sustainable development. In fact, we gave one solar roof. They are now installing another one in their new building with their own funding. Their own so funding. that is sustainability. Yeah. And in Panama village, we are trying to organize. There are two communities. There are Tamil and Sinhala. And we are trying to organize uh, Tamil language uh, teachers voluntarily teach people and Sinhala people teach Tamil people. So that way we try to bring uh, people together, learning languages for reconciliation. It's very important. We are trying to put these different communities together. I hope people will see the benefits of these projects. We don't give freely. We empower them to do them. What we do is we plant the seed of the solar village and the villagers together work to grow it to a huge tree, huge solar village. That is our aim. So any support for this project from any donor or any association is highly welcome with the freely available solar energy. If we can develop these villages, the country will be a beautiful country. Professor Dharmadasa, thank you very much. And long may you continue uh, this I mean, great work. I'm proud to introduce you to our fellow Sri Lankans. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, oh. Okay, um, thank you so much. So this is uh, to give you a briefing on what the solar village concept is about. Um, but I know that some of you have uh, a number of questions. We will come to the questions at the Q&A session. I want to go through another presentation first. And once we've finished that pres presentation, um, we'd like to um, invite you to interact with us uh, by, first of all, putting the, the questions into the Q&A box. Um, I saw a couple of raised hands earlier. Please put the question into the Q&A. And Saroj Batharina will, will um, try and um, forward your questions to the right person during the Q&A session. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and share the, the next PowerPoint um, presentation I've got here. Um, hopefully that. Okay. So um, you were briefly introduced to Professor Dharmadasa, who is actually a physicist. Um, he's a professor emeritus from the Sheffield um, Hallam University. And he came up with this concept going back 30 years. And he has been working tirelessly to, to promote this um, project. What we're hoping to do is through Solar Village SDG to try and accelerate that process, to try and expand the solar villages to as many remote places in Sri Lanka as possible, but perhaps taking it beyond Sri Lanka thereafter. So we're quite ambitious in our, in our plans. Um, but you can see that it's a wealth creation method for the local communities. Um, so um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the, the, the details of that plan now, um, and uh, then you'll see what, uh, what this is all about. So first of all, uh, what is sustainable development? And uh, to be honest, it's Professor Dharmadasa who made me understand what sustainability is about. It's really about empowering and enabling people who are less privileged to live with dignity and have enduring skills which will enable them to support themselves. So it's not about charity. It's not about giving things free of charge. It's about empowering people to look after themselves. So it's about balancing economic growth with the social and environmental impacts that, uh, uh, that it creates. So, so far, um, the work of Professor Amradasa has touched the lives of more than 15,000 people. Um, so it's a very impactful um, project um, that he's been working on for all these years. He's established nine solar villages, or some are 
on underway currently um five very much completed uh, a sixth one just recently established as recently as a week ago um and the the funding for that has come from lots of different um sources um there, there's uh, an organization that professor damadas and, and i are both involved in called the apsl uk it's a professional association of uh, from of sri lankans um and a lot of funds have been raised uh with their assistance and number of other charities uh, who've helped and individuals who've come forward. But the very first one uh, that was established in Kadaroa, it was Professor Dharmadasa's own funds he used to set it up. Um, so what we're hoping now is to expand this project through different income streams. So it's about trying to give a man, uh, trying to teach a man to fish, because if you give a man a fish, you'll feed him for just one day. Whereas if you teach him to fish, you'll feed him for an entire lifetime. So this is the principle, the motto that will, the adage that we'll work towards. Okay, that's what this is about. So how does it work? Um, in the first instance, uh, the professor's been identifying a remote and needy community. Um, and then funds are raised to set up a solar roof, for example, and then a, a, a local solar company will install the roof. And then it could be on a, on a communal building, typically, say, a, a school. Um, and then a village development committee is formed. And that's where you've got the equal numbers of men and women participating in that VDC, the Village Developmental Committee. They open a bank account and they manage that bank account. And the the uh, solar panel, the electricity that's generation is connected to the national grid. Um, and uh, local permissions might have to be obtained for that purpose. The uh, funds are received to the VDC account from the Ceylon Electricity Board from the national grid um, because of a particular scheme that they run. Um, and then the local um, solar village teams advises the VDC and the funds are then used for the sustainable development projects. So, um, and I mentioned that there are 17 SDGs. And uh, so what we're hoping to do is to expand this as rapidly as we can so that people who are currently living in darkness without electricity, people who are using kerosene lamps, people who are cooking with firewood still in the remote villages, that they can have access to electricity because that, that having that access to clean, renewable energy makes all the difference to their lives. Their children don't have to strain their eyes when they're doing their homework. Um, and so uh, from, from a little kerosene lamp and it's... Uh, causes a lot of pollution as well. Um, so all, all round, this is incredibly beneficial. So um, the solar powered um, water pumps can also be installed and that can provide clean drinking water and it reduces um, disease, for example, kidney disease. And uh, that's what Professor uh, Dharmadasa found, that by uh, installing the solar water filtration systems, then uh, solar water powered filtration systems, it reduced the, the kidney disease, incidence of kidney disease in the, in the local area. And the, they also, the, the locals actually managed to set up a scheme whereby they managed to sell the water, the filtered water, at a very low cost to neighboring villages. So they not only benefited for themselves, but they shared that benefit with other communities in, in, in the neighborhood as well. So this enabled the, these communities to, uh, to be enhanced and to be empowered. So that's the key word, empowerment. Um, not, it's not about charity. So you can see on the right hand side uh, the uh, the images of people actually uh, a solar company coming and setting up the, um, the the solar panels. So these are the seventeen sustainable developmental goals enunciated by the UN, and we're hoping that we can meet as many of these as possible. Um, but uh, in in fact, uh, the uh, Professor Darmadas's model um, predated the enunciation of these 17 sustainable development goals by the UN, um, because he's been working on this project since 2008, um, whereas I believe it was some eight or nine years later that the UN formulated them into 17. But the solar village concept actually meets at least 13 or 14 of these um, automatically. So this is why this is a really wonderful project to, to be involved in.
And I'm hoping that you'll be persuaded to also contribute or participate or support in some way. Just to give you an example, this is the very first one. Um, this is the, the, the school that Professor uh, men mentioned. Uh, this is the Kadruwewa Primary School. Uh, it was earmarked for closure by the Sri Lankan government in 2004. But following the installation of these solar panelled um, provisions, uh, the local community formed a VDC, and uh, with the uh, with with this um, sustainable method of wealth wealth creation, uh, the VDC managed to uh, manage the the funds sustainably and transparently, which is key here. Uh, transparency is extremely important, and this that particular school, as the professor mentioned earlier on, is thriving. It's actually um, doing incredibly well um, in in the in the region um, from going from something that was about to be closed to one of the top um, uh, performing schools in the region. It's pretty impressive. So this is the kind of thing that the solar village concept and wh what we hope with the solar village SDG is to achieve this kind of results. So here you've got the uh, Mediawa solar village project. Um, this is uh, this was funded and organized by the APSL UK. You can see the, um, the solar company uh, actually setting up the panel before and after on this communal building. And you'll see that the kind of cost um, that was uh, generated there was about, uh, for, for this purpose, was about two and a half thousand pounds. Um, and I hope I'm getting the, the maths correct. I believe it's about two and a half thousand pounds um, because, as the professor mentioned, the cost of these panels have come down a little bit since the, the early days. And uh, it could create about 22,000 rupees per month for these um, for these communities, and the installation only took a couple of days. Um, the permissions took a little bit longer, but this was organised by APSL UK, and completed just a, a, about a week ago. So this is ongoing process. Um, we want as many organisations, individuals, to participate in this project, in these projects, and to come forward and to assist. It's it's not limited to any one individual or to any one organization. We welcome collaborations going forward. We're hoping that Solar Village SDG will collaborate with as many people as, and organizations as possible. So the step one to establishing Solar Village, identifying the site, then the, the wealth creation method appropriate for the community as well. We, we need to make sure that once it's the wealth creation method is created, um, that uh, it's appropriate for them, for the local community. The local teams appointed, the village development committee is, install, uh, is appointed, and then the, the solar panels um, actually installed following tenders by various companies. And then the, the payments to the VDC bank account is arranged as well. And um, the, the, the local, um, the solar village team will advise the VDC um, on the various uh, processes and, and how to even organize the, the managing the funds as well. So what I'm hoping is that Solar Village SDG will actually, in the first instance, using these funds to set up a smart room in the schools. If we were to set up these solar panels in schools, the communal building, if they're focused on schools, then in the first instance, we could set up smart rooms, um, give internet access to these kids. And then on from that, we can do other things, for example, cottage gardens, cottage industries, and I'll explain that a little bit in a minute as well. So the, the fundraising, first of all, the step three, um, we need to raise funds. You can't do anything without having the funding available. So there are different sources, some of which uh, a Professor identified uh, in, in his interview. Um, in the first instance, he has been securing and, and continuing to secure institutional grant funding. And we hope with Solar Village SDG to be able to do that, to expand that. And also corporate sponsorship, some of these solar companies, for example, or other companies who've got nothing to do with solar um, um, uh, panels or anything of that kind, um, companies could actually sponsor some of these uh, solar villages or some of the activities that we're doing for the benefit of the solar villages through the sponsored or ticketed events. So we're actually hoping to set up an event uh, uh, in about a year's time or direct donations or 
as a uh, an incorporated um, uh, social enterprise, what we're hoping is that we could also trade in some artisanal goods um, to generate the income for these projects. So there are lots and lots of different income sources, if anybody can think of other um, partnerships that we could have to generate further income to expand these projects. Those ideas are very welcome. So of the SDGs, uh, these are some of the, um, the sustainable developmental goals that uh, Solar Village SDG will have, for example, gender parity. We want to give Sri Lankan women in the first instance, but hopefully expanding beyond Sri Lanka later, giving women opportunities to participate in the labor force, because that's seriously lacking in Sri Lanka. We've got 54% of the population who are female, but only 30% who are actually participating and ge creating economic, um, uh, generating wealth in the country. And it's, it's something that's really important if we want the country to succeed as a whole. So we, we need equal access to education for girls, we need skills enhancement for female-led households. Uh, we need protection from uh, domestic abuse or other forms of abuse for girls and women. Uh, we need to give women a voice. Um, and increasingly, that's happening in Sri Lanka, which is great. And we want to make sure that there's no discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. So we want to also support the LGBTQ community through this, through the gender parity um, uh, plans. So then... Uh, I wanted to uh, mention to you this particular model school. This is the Agamati Vidyalaya of Kaluthara. And I mentioned that there's a particularly um, visionary principle there. And he has been working on this Cinnamon Gardens project. And his vision is to make his children at the school global citizens. And what he wanted to do was, he's, he's got a plantation of about 1,000 cinnamon plants. What he wants to do is make use of that to not just plant um, trees for the sake of it, but he wants to teach the children methods of um, plantations, agriculture as a business and teach them economics and teach them exports and that sort of thing. So using this plantation, the Cinnamon Gardens project to teach all of these things to his children. You'll see that some of the parents have participated in this and the bottom left, you've got some of the mums who've actually participated in actually helping set this these plantations up. So you'd need somebody visionary to actually lead these kinds of um, projects. And uh, I'm hoping that this particular principle is on the call. There is an associated school nearby, as I mentioned, um, called Musius College, uh, led by Nadisha. They're also doing an excellent um, programs for their children as well. Um, the particular smart rooms actually um, set up in the Agamati school. And we're hoping that these two uh, or three schools will become model schools. So SDG 2 is Zero Hunger, and one of the projects we're also trying to get off the ground at this school, uh, this model school, is to set up cottage gardens and to teach the, the children self-sufficiency because food security is a real issue in Sri Lanka and has been for the last three four years. So we need to try and make sure that the children learn how to grow their own vegetables and uh, in their backyard. So this is uh, another project, and we um, asked the agriculture teacher there, um, it's Kalpani to help us um, get a sense of how much it will cost to set up a vegetable patch and based on her estimates is 24,350 rupees which is a, a mere 65 pounds with that kind of money we can actually teach the children self-sufficiency and a whole school will learn this um, from, from just that. So you can see that, that we are quite, quite ambitious in our projects, we've got quite a lot of plans, but we need individuals to support this, um, these ventures, these projects. So we're hoping in the first instance to recruit for three roles and later on expand to a couple of other roles as well once we are more established. In the first instance, most urgent um, request is to uh, recruit an advocacy and fundraising manager. Um, so if anybody on the call has the specific skills, we're hoping that somebody will come forward. We also need help help to manage the, the general administration. So if you've got skills there and you're willing to volunteer your skills and uh, a bit of time, that would be most welcome. And as we mentioned earlier on, uh, an online education coordinator, a general coordinator is, is quite critical for our initial educational um, projects to, to get off the ground. Later on, we will have specific uh, 
recruitments for the cottage industries and the female empowerment. Um, but the, the, the three um, urgent ones are these. There'll be other a couple of other roles with it as well that we'll need to recruit for later. But the, these first three, if you have those skills and you are interested in participating, please come forward and once again, email that particular email address. Um, and um, we are anticipating in the first year or so, um, if you can devote a couple of hours a week, uh, it might increase to about three hours per week, um, and, uh, unless we're actually doing an event, in which case um, four hours a week might be the kind of commitment that you might need to give for these roles. So um, as a part of the questionnaire, we had a sense of um, uh, what sort of uh, percentage of people who responded are willing to um, help out in the different projects. And we're really pleased to see that more than half were in, interested in education uh, projects um, and 46.7% uh, in, uh, interested in alleviating poverty. This is out of 75 responses. We've now got over 100 now. So some of these figures will have actually increased. Um, so there, there are a lot of people who are interested in female empowerment, and uh, vocational training skills and tackling child abuse and that sort of thing. So really pleased to see the um, real interest amongst you. Um, and there are quite a lot of people who've said already that they'd be willing to teach adults as well, not just the children. So really pleased to see that too. So thank you very much for that. So some of the things that we want to do is, um, for example, upcycling. Upcycling is different to recycling. Upcycling is actually using old things, not to disintegrate as you would with recycling, but to make use of old things to make them into new usable things. So any old pair of jeans that you might have um, handy that uh, you're about to throw away because uh, it's too tight for you, we can make use of that to make it into a, a bag or something. So we're hoping that using those things, we can actually help um, the uh, support livelihoods as well. So um, skills acquisition for female-led households, for example, handicrafts, um, later on some microcredits, mentoring schemes, these are the kind of things that we hope to set up in due course. We're also interested in the, resolving the human um, elephant conflict in the country um, in our in our limited way. But obviously, we, we might not be able to help the entire country, but we can start pilot projects, which can later grow into something much more. We're, and there are natural means of doing this through beekeeping. One of our members is very interested in, in looking after this project. So if anybody is particularly keen on, on get, getting involved in this, please come forward. Um, I know that there's already a mention of um, uh, keeping the, the country tidy and cleaning up the country. So we want to try and um, promote a keeping Sri Lanka tidy campaign with the recycling initiatives, encouraging children in the main to participate in maybe some litter picks or uh, you can see the state of some of our beaches and some of our uh, cities. So encouraging um, the use of bins and um, putting things um, uh, uh, away for recycling. We also want to uh, support the environment. So there are lots and lots of projects that we've got planned, but we need supporters, we need volunteers to come forward to fundraise. This is critical. And so already we are planning on an event in November 2025 uh, as by way of a Sri Lankan art auction and cultural program. So if you're interested in participating and helping out, as I said, the kind of commitment you might need to make is a couple of hours a week initially and maybe nearer the time, about three, four hours. But um, this is uh, what uh, we're hoping to set up. It's it's um, It should generate quite a lot of income Come for these projects, the solar village projects. So this is about meeting the sustainable developmental goals. Um, a little summary here for you to see again what these are: um, alleviating poverty, food security, health and well-being, quality, accessible education, which is what we're focusing on the initial stage, gender parity, clean water, clean, affordable energy, etc., decent work. 
So this, these are the kind of short and medium term goals for Solaridge SDG and also the long term goals. I don't want to take up more of your time because we need time for questions. So I'm going to hand over now. Thank you very much for listening. I'm going to ask you please to email this email address if you've got any uh, follow up, if you want to um, offer any, any time to volunteer for any of these projects. Um, please join us, please support us, but I'm going to now ask um, uh, Saroj to take over and uh, run the Q&A session, please. Thank you, Nilmini. Thank you for that uh, wonderful presentation and a lot of hard work indeed. Uh, and also thank you for Professor Dharmadas for explaining the Solar Village concept. Uh, Nilmini, uh, I have been watching the, the reading the comments and questions while you were doing the presentation. Uh, several people, some people, about I think 25 people by now had to leave due to different reasons. Mainly, uh, many people were, were attending attended from Australia, so it is far mid well over mid, past midnight. So they are interested, but they had to leave. They have uh, excused. And, and also, you know, here in Sri Lanka, it's raining like nothing, cats and dogs. Also, some people have left before be because of the bad weather. So a couple of questions, uh, linked uh, questions to the uh, uh, English te teaching sessions, English teaching program. Uh, Rather than asking many questions, Nilmini, I would, uh, because I collected these questions and they, these are all, I mean, connected. So I will ask you first uh, set of questions from you. And then uh, there are some questions to Professor Dharmadasa about the uh, solar village uh, concept. So Nilmini, it is uh, Upeksha Ratna Sena has asked about the date of commencement. And uh, Panchana has uh, also asked about how many students per, per class and does each tutor get one specific student and i mean it's it's about whether you have a syllabus and how we do how would you distribute uh, that syllabus and also uh, what is the duration of this uh, english teaching program so these are the kind of questions uh, on, with regard to the english uh, teaching and and there are there is another interesting question i mean they are they are asking for more information and who would bear the cost for the uh, Zoom session. So if someone need to do the Zoom session, who would bear the cost? And from where you would do the Zoom uh, lessons, whether it is from home or whether it is whether there will be a center in Colombo, in a village or in an area where, where they could go and, you know, attend the Zoom, I mean, conduct the Zoom class from there. So these are the questions with regard to the uh, English teaching. Okay, so there's quite a lot of questions uh, rolled up into one. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can try and address as many as possible in one go. But if I if I fail to please remind me of what's missing. Um, so when is it launching? Um, um, we're hoping to launch in January. We don't have an exact date yet because the Zoom classroom in the Kaluthara uh, school, the, the Agamathi Mahavidyala school, that's where we are starting this program. As I mentioned, um, we are hoping to make that the model school. We want to establish it there. Once we've ironed out any, any issues, whilst we're working with that particular school, once we've done that, then we can expand to other schools later on. So this is the the plan is to pilot first and then to expand expand um, because if we start doing uh, something that's too big and unmanageable, then we'll we won't get it right. So it's important to iron things out in in one school uh, with the help of this particular um, principal and the English department. And then we'll expand. So uh, the, the plan is to start in January, uh, perhaps from about the 6th of January. I'm sorry, I can't be more specific on the date because the Zoom classroom, the, the smart room is just being completed as we speak. So it's not completely ready, but hopefully by the 7th of December, it will be ready. And there is a syllabus, which is another part of your question. There is a syllabus that we have already worked on with the English department um, and in that particular school. Um, so the, it's not going to be something that is 
very academic. It's really important that the children enjoy their session and it's going to be an after school club in the first instance. So the idea is to set up an after school club and it'll be um, just about 20 minutes after school ends in Sri Lanka. So the children have a breather before they join the after school club in a Zoom classroom in that particular school in the first instance. There are about 40 children there, but once we've piloted it and then we can establish something, we can then try and expand. Taking it step by step, in the first instance, it'll the from the volunteers who've come forward, we're asking people to teach at the beginners level and intermediate level. And that program's already been established. We've worked with the English department at that, that particular school to find the solution for that. But as I mentioned, there are lots and lots of resources, and we're going to give a little bit of leeway for the individual tutors as to how they manage it because there are certain topics to be covered in this uh, syllabus and then it'll be up to the individual teachers for their own mark as to how they promote that but in a in an enjoyable way for the children so that it doesn't become an extension of the classroom rigor um, because we don't want to tire out the kids as they are and one of the things that you might remember that um, Nethmi mentioned during her uh, little um, intervention is that there's a lot of emphasis um, in Sri Lanka for achieving the grades um, but at the end of the day the kids can't actually speak the language uh, and that's what this is about it's about supporting the work of the tutor the teachers during the daytime the academic teachers by providing an opportunity for the kids to relax and enjoy themselves but learn without them even realizing that they're learning in an enjoyable way so that's why the zoom um we shouldn't even call, call them zoom classroom they should be just an after school club um and also the book club there's a ways of teaching the the, in, the children in an unseen way so those things will start from about January, hopefully middle of January. Um, but as I said, these things, depending on who comes forward, we need to recruit for two or three roles. If we've got um, support from those of you who are volunteer English tutors, if you can support with some of our administration, it'll then help us set this up uh, really well, working again with the, 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 the experts who are the principals and the tutors. Um, I'm not an educator. Educator, so um, I'm not really able to contribute except to signpost. Um, so that's what we're hoping. Um, are there any other can aspects I, of the question? Can I just update a little bit? Yes. The, the smart rooms or, or the equipped rooms are developing in the other schools as well at the same time. So in Kalutara, I know at least the other two schools are also developing smart rooms. So the one that we designed for this purpose will be opening in December. And the uh, that school, the, the room, start room is designed to accommodate 30 children at one point. So you will have something like 30 maximum in a classroom. Then the uh, funding that they've asked, we've, we've asked the schools who are connecting up through their smart rooms, whether they'll be able to fund the uh, the connectivity that means the uh, broadband connectivity the schools have funds to manage that so that is not a burden for us so the schools themselves can manage the connectivity costs then the zoom program uh, as i understood and i also learned from mervin who has been engaging in this is that uh, Microsoft Zoom is available free for registered charities. So the Leeds is actually becoming uh, fully registered as an education charity in Sri Lanka. So we may have access to Microsoft Teams, which can conduct several sessions at the same time using the same link. So that will be free for 10 years, I believe. So hopefully uh, it's kind of... Uh, cost-free, I could say, for us in that way. So it might happen that, like that. So Ula, there like is that. another question with regard to the same thing. Uh, that, that's that's where you have set up uh, Zoom classes, right? Yeah. But where, what about the areas where there is no internet access? There is a question about how do you provide internet access to children from outside Colombo or in remote areas? 
Well, at the moment, uh, the uh, Sri Lanka Telecom is providing wireless connectivity. So you can actually buy a router that will connect wireless, uh, uh, I think 2.4G connectivity. So that is good enough for for Zoom classes and 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 even more than that. So uh, the connectivity you don't need wiring anymore, and the SLT or the other telephone providers will tell you how much coverage they can give to a particular area. So so it's not much of a restriction at the moment. Okay, thank you. And also for you to, I mean, there has been uh, several questions about whether this will be available. This uh, program is recorded and it will be available on Leeds YouTube channel. Is that, am I correct, you, Yes. Correct, correct. This, this uh, video will be available. Not only that, the whole uh, smart room development has been recorded basically to show as a role model so that if people want to follow, they can follow that and take advice from those people who were involved in developing the smart room at the Agamathi school. So, so because of that, so there is a role model to follow and others to help as well. So that is how this is developing. And all these connectivity will be available as open videos for anyone to look at. With, with with your permission, with organizers' uh, permission, I'm also happy to, you know, uh, put this, uh, this information, this, these videos in my channel, which is Sandesh by Saroj. So uh, another, now another question uh, to uh, Professor Dharmadasa. Professor Dharmadasa, one question, I mean, a couple of questions says, it's not very clear what Solar Village is. Is it a business enterprise or how it is being funded? And would you be able to elaborate on more, please? Uh, thank you, Saroj. Uh, this we started this as a charity program. Uh, it's using uh, charitable funds, donations from people. That is how we started. And obviously, what we want to do is uh, do a certain number of villages and then introduce these successful projects to the government so that we can uh, develop the whole country. That's the that's the aim. We started it, it as a charity charity program, not as a business program. But if we want, we can even convert it into a business program in the future because this is the right time for us to develop the country, contribute. Uh, we, are, we are trying to find funds from outside by applying uh, from funding bodies. If we can get enough funds, we can start new projects. But as I said, uh, we have to get the government support. I think the new government is very supportive of uh, rural development. And hopefully in the near future, we can work with them and to develop the country. Um, can I just come in there? Um, because um, we mentioned during the PowerPoint presentation, there are lots of different sources of income. So one is the institutional funding, getting grants from various funding bodies. And that's something that Professor Armada has been working on um, quite hard um, and raising funds that way. Uh, second is actually working with other organizations like charities um, and um, collaborating, what we're hoping for Solar Village SDG to do is to collaborate with other organizations, other charities, other corporate bodies or other individuals, whoever who's willing to cooperate and collaborate with us to raise funds. And this could be through um, also from ticketed events, sponsored events, whether it's a sponsored walk, a sponsored cultural program where it's where it's ticketed and the sponsorship from corporate bodies who might be a, a, a solar company, or it could be something completely unrelated to energy at all. So for example, a law firm could sponsor an event um, or, or a, a, a GP practice could sponsor an event and they could promote their own business as part of their corporate social responsibility. So the, there are lots of different ways for us to raise funds um, and uh, with that and donations, direct donations for these particular projects. So sometimes a, a family might actually come forward and say, look, I want to sponsor, a, 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 we want to sponsor a particular um, solar village. So we will try and facilitate that. Um, uh, but what we're hoping is to expand this solar village 
a SDG programme across the country and with the funding, the wealth creation method, um, by connecting to the Ceylon Electricity Board um, scheme, we are hoping to provide an ongoing income source for that particular community. And that particular community can then invest in turn in the Zoom classroom. Um, setting up a, a smart room, for example, in the in the local school. So this is a kind of a trickle down, um, cascading uh, program of wealth creation for the local community, so that they can be empowered. That's what it's all about: empowering the community with those. I believe, uh, Saroj, there was Mervin who ha had an intervention as well. Yes, um, Mervin. Mervin wants to speak. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, I was actually coming in uh, in response to the question you asked about connectivity. Uh, this is all right for the schools with smart rooms and who can fund their broadband. That's fine. Just I just want to uh, explain very briefly what we have been doing to the APSLs, uh, scholarship schemes, in online speaking, English classes. Janet, who is sat next to me, has been teaching for nearly three years since COVID. And obviously what we did at the time was very much, if you you might call it a knee-jerk reaction, but we realized lots of kids were at home month after month after month with no hope, not knowing when they would go back to school. And a lot of them did not have any sophisticated technology, but uh, perhaps their own no parents' mobile phone they borrowed to do schoolwork and get in the download handouts the teachers were sending. So we, using Zoom, we start delivering classes and a lot of parents used to get one of those SIM cards topped up. And uh, that's how at home, holding the mobile phone, they took part in the English lesson week after week for an hour. So yes, from different villages and the signal wasn't perfect sometimes, but it was there. So while the classes do that in the organized setup, that could also throw the door open for a few other children who may not be in that village also to join into the class while we start delivering this. I, I thought I would just add that comment as a way around. Thank you, Mervin. Thank you. Shamini has asked uh, whether it is okay to share this video with others interested. By all means, yes, well, the, the, the more the better. Uh, Nilmini, there is another question about, is there any cost involved to students uh, who are attending these classes and will there be support to the teachers? Yeah, um, the, the idea is not to impose any burden, financial burden on the students, because we are trying to help the those children who are underprivileged. So we don't want to impose more financial burdens on them or their parents. So th this is why the wealth creation method that Solar Village SDG will promote is, is critical, because uh, the idea is to enable the local community to have an ongoing source of income. And with that income, they will then manage the the, the smart rooms or the, the Zoom classrooms, the funding of that, the internet connectivity, the computers, all of those things cost money. Um, but what Mer Mervyn mentioned earlier on was ac giving access to the children through their parents or their own mobile phones. Now, that's a slightly different scenario and we want to enable this zoom classroom the online after school club to expand to those mobile phones as well there's an additional issue there because if you're in a in a zoom classroom where there's a teacher supervising on that end in the zoom classroom that's set up that's fine because you, you have a qualified, experienced teacher supervising the children. But if we are going to go into the child's home onto their mobile phone, then we have to make sure that we've got uh, some certain safeguards in place as well, um, because we will need this is where we are saying we need to recruit the um, coordinators people with the IT skills to help because we might need to even set up some kind of app um, or something that will enable those children to have access to a vetted um, uh, tutor um, who can then you know, work with them one-to-one -one or not, not necessarily on, on a group setting. Uh, Chula mentioned that this particular um, smart room has a capacity for 30 children at a time. 
um, but that suits the, the need as uh, currently, but it may be that we need to expand this. So we're hoping to grow this bit by bit by bit, but there shouldn't be any cost to the actual tr children. But we're hoping, for example, the online um, uh, book club, if we can, through funding at our end in the UK or from overseas, if we can provide a, a number of books for these children at that end, then we can have that interactive meeting between the student or um, uh, English tutor uh, uh, from from overseas with those children in, um, in, in Sri Lanka. So this has got to grow gradually. It's not something that we can put in place overnight, but uh, and there may be some hiccups along the way as well, which we'll need to iron out. This is precisely why we want to limit it to the model school as a pilot program, and then we will expand. I believe that there Thanks, are some Nilmini, questions. Nilmini, I'm mindful of that we are running out of time. But a couple of questions to you, and then there is another question to Dr. Dharmadasa, Professor Dharmadasa. Nilmini, I think we mentioned, but people are still asking, what are the dates and specific times for these classes? And also, for unqualified teachers, will there be a train the trainers uh, program? And that's yeah. and again to see about the syllabus. Yes, we are hoping to create a train the trainers program as well. Um, but as I mentioned, these things will take a little bit of time to put into place. We are going to need some more volunteers to come forward to help us formulate some of those things. Um, and we will um, try and get these things up and running, hopefully by middle of January. That's the kind of a target date that we've got in mind. But it also depends on who can come forward to assist us in this process but as soon as we have got something set up we will email because they, we've put a put forward a questionnaire and based on the replies to those, those questionnaires um we will try and formulate uh, the, the program um and uh the the deadline for that is the 30th of november so if based on the replies to those questionnaires after the 30th of November we'll start to put together the program and we'll be in touch with those people who've who've clearly indicated uh, a, wi a wish to participate in this um in the in certain they've also expressed some interest in some other the broader objectives as well but we'll be in touch but we'll need to create some kind of app or some kind of system this is where Mer people like Mervyn will, might be able to help to to make sure that tutors can um, book out slots, um, and then the children can, the in the classroom can be matched. Um, so we might have originally when we first started this program, we needed to have look for just four tutors, actually two for the beginners class, two for the intermediate class. That's what we were after. But we were surprised that uh, nearly 600 people had shown an interest and uh, uh, over 130 people joined on this call. There may be many others, as Saroji mentioned, because of the timing and the, the bad weather and all that. Not everybody was able to join this call. But I'm hoping based on the reply to those questionnaires, we can formulate the program much better better. I think Mervyn, you had a question as well. Yes, Mervyn, please. Sorry, that forgot what I was going to say at the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we were talking about the cost. There somebody was asking whether there was a cost to the teacher to the children. Yeah. Yeah. Really trying to describe our own experience of doing this. What has happened was this was very much children learning at home. Janet and there were a couple of other teachers who were taking classes using Zoom at the time. And they used to using WhatsApp because all the kids had WhatsApp on their phones to get schoolwork and out from school. So we used to send a couple of PDF documents in advance to the children to download, take to one of the local bureaus, get them printed. There was a cost there so that they had something to look at, do some homework, etc. There was some interactivity. So that there was a bit of a cost there, yes. Right, thank you, Marvin. Uh, Professor Dharmada said now, Kaushalya Kumari Hami is asking that she's very interested in joining the Solar Village project. How can she, how could she join as a volunteer? And will there be, is there a, a similar questionnaire to be uh, completed when you are uh, joining as a volunteer for the Solar Village project? Well, thank you, Saroj. At this stage, anybody can join this project. It's very open to anybody. I think especially for people who are living in developed countries, Australia or UK or US, uh, raising uh, 3,000 pounds, 4,000 pounds is not a 
a huge job and through a association or uh, what is called uh, a crowdfunding we can raise those funds uh, we have a well established uh, network in sri lanka to do these projects now and those funds can be kept with those people who are raising it we can do all the uh, all the work necessary for the project uh, if we want we can select a site uh or funders can select with their preferences where the site should be we can do all the hard work and then we can arrange uh, a pv uh, company in sri lanka to install it so the funders can directly pay to the company so we can do all the all the necessary work the at this stage funding is the main uh, main hurdle once we have funds we can do everything else for them so anybody who is interested who can raise those 3 4 thousand pounds and we can start and also we uh, appoint someone to uh, keep contacts with that community those people who have raised funds can keep contacts when they go to sri lanka they can go and see them what they are doing and that kind of links we can we can provide professor how can someone contact you what is the best uh, way to contact you i think my email is there uh, anybody can uh, it's we can leave it in the chat and anybody can contact me or anybody else uh, saroj or uh, nilmini we can we can uh, arrange everything for them to start a solar village wherever they like and one nice thing is uh, up to now we are now do, we have done almost nine uh, we didn't handle funding funding is always with the institute we arrange everything and the institute apsl or helasarana directly pay to the company so that is the nice thing so the anybody who is interested can raise the funds pay directly back to the company we do all the uh, groundwork necessary for the solar village uh, anonymous attendee has uh, this attendee has uh, uh, made several comments very interesting comments this is uh, the comment he has the latest uh, la comment by anonymous attendee he says he or she says we have two organizations uh, located in the us with the support from the us embassy in sri lanka we could help fundraise through those organizations too if you would like is there a way that we can connect with one of the founders from the solar village sdg last summer we raised uh, close to 1.3 billion donations to seven different hospitals and six different schools that are in low income areas we raised during the 2022 year close to $5000 which helped purchase uh, dry ration foods for 2280 sri lankans with the help of charities like the api foundation and foundation of goodness these donations were distributed to those in need let us know where to email more information i've just uh, just coming in there i've just put in two email addresses uh, saraj into the chat yeah, yeah. Um, if anybody is interested in participating providing support um, supporting our fundraising activities please email these cc uh, to these emails um and uh, i'll put another one as well um if you can contact us we will get in touch with you because we would very much welcome support with our fundraising initiatives and in particular we've got a fundraising event planned in november 2025 and if there are volunteers to help participate in in assisting with that fundraising event we could it's april 2025 right no it's it's november 2025 right november okay. 2025 um so i'm putting in three email addresses for the solar village um project if you can CC all three of these email addresses, uh, that will be really helpful. We'll be in touch with you. Very much welcome any support we can um, glean fr from the uh, volunteers on this call today. I mean, this is the right time to expand this project in a very rapid way. It's a good time. Uh, government is trying to do the same thing. Uh, if expatriates uh, can help this way, this project will thrive and the country will benefit. I think we can contribute in a huge way to develop our country. 
That's right, because this is a, a, an enduring project. It's not about charity. And this is the key message that I wanted to give today. It's not about charity. It's not consumable charity in the sense that we're not trying to give a man a fish. We want to teach them how to fish. That way they will have a source of food and income for the rest of their lives. And that's the difference between charitable um, programs and this one. This is about empowering people, empowering but on a long-term basis. Long yeah. basis. With this particular wealth creation method, this particular wealth creation method, which which um, I, I thought was wonderful when I heard about it from Professor Dharmadasa. So this is why I'm all, all up uh, for, for supporting his work. That's kind of uh, sums up the questions uh, because pretty much uh, many, many questions are of the uh, similar nature, uh, Nilvini. So let me read, uh, read out again the three emails. Uh, CEO at solarvillagestg.org or chair at solarvillagesdg.org. Uh, solarvillagesdg is one word, all simple you can have, or director.coms at solarvillagesdg.org. Solarvillagesdg is one word. So you can contact us on either CC to all three emails or send send an email to one of these emails. Uh, so you can you, you maybe we will be we will be in touch. Thank you, Nilmini. Over to you. Thank you. Um, I believe it's uh, time is pressing on and we don't want to um, take up too much of time, especially people dialing in from far and wide. It might be quite late at night. Um, so we'd like to wrap things up. Thank you very much, Chula, for putting everybody together for this call. Um, and thank you, Professor Dharmadasa and uh, Saroj, for all your assistance and your uh, contributions today. Um, thank you for everybody else on this call who contributed. Mervyn, thank you very much for sharing your experience uh, and all those who contributed on the videos as well uh, during the presentations. Thank you all for coming. I think we could probably conclude there. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chula. Thank, thank you. you, everybody. Thank um, you, everybody. Thank there's you, uh, Des who's raised his hand. I don't know whether... Anybody wants to take a quick, quick uh, um, question there? There are a couple of raised hands before we disperse completely. In case there are burning questions, but uh, anybody who, who needs to go, please feel free to leave um, because I know it's late. Leeds YouTube channel, uh, someone is asking, share the Leeds YouTube channel. Let me quickly share the uh, Leeds YouTube channel on the chat. Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, Nilbini will post the link so they will see it. Right. Okay. 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 Oh, um, Chula, I wonder whether you okay. could please put that Leeds YouTube channel. I don't have it immediately to hand. Um, do you? I think, think if you search saying Sri Lanka Leeds, it will come up. Well, okay. One word: Sri Lanka uh, Leeds. Um, okay. Uh, Nilbini, Nilbini, yeah. there was a question. Just ask him more details about the Solar Village project. In fact, uh, what about the advocacy document? We have prepared a document to yes. give all the information. So perhaps yes. we can uh, circulate. Or... Yeah. 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 Um, so um, anybody, if you can please respond to the questionnaire by the 30th of November, what we will do is to all those people who responded to the questionnaire, we will circulate the advocacy document as well as um, information about the actual English language tutoring program. Um, but uh, if you need to have access to anything and we haven't been able to communicate it right now, please email any one of these email addresses and we'll try and get back in touch with you. Please email this these email addresses rather than any email address that uh, we might have used from um, our workplaces before. Uh, I'd be grateful so we can keep this work distinct. Um, so email CEO at solarvillagesdg.org, chair at solarvillagesdg.org, or director.coms at solarvillagesdg.org. If you can email one of these or all three of those in, in one go, we'll get back in touch with the full um, work that's been going on in relation to the solar villages um, with support from various organizations and individuals, but also something about our plans going forward as well.
please get in touch. Um, there, there are a couple of hands raised. Um, I don't know, Saroj, whether you want to take those questions or, or not, uh, whether we've got time. Yeah, I can't see the, the, the oh, okay. Maybe I couldn't see the... Okay, yeah. there's uh, Des Don Paul who's got a hand raised. Um, Are you there? You might need to put the question into the chat, uh, Des, um, because this is on webinar mode. Um I'm not sure the way, whether we can actually have an interaction as such. I think we can't, no, because if there is no question here. Yeah, uh, if you can put your question into the Q&A box, please, Des, that'll be really helpful. Okay, Sri Lanka Leads uh, YouTube channel cannot be found. Hold on, let me quickly, let me quickly. Yeah, if, um, let me, let me get it, just a second, I'll get it. Okay. Please, okay. Julia, if you can, that'll be really helpful. Okay. And uh, I will also post this video on uh, Sandesh by Saroj. So thank you. That'll be really good. Uh, could you put your son Sandesh uh, yeah, um, I mean, link as well, please, uh, Saroj? Okay. Uh... Des, if if uh, you. Uh... Don't manage to put the question into the I'll, Q &A. I'll put an answer. I'll, I'll put an answer here. Please, please email us, Des. Yeah, I'll answer it. Yeah. On this now, am I getting it somewhere? Okay, we've got the Sandesh. Um, I've got it copied. I'm just trying to type it. Just yeah, okay. we've got the Sandesh link uh, on the YouTube channel for Sandesh for uh, Sarah's uh, channel. And Chula will put the Leeds channel, there we go, uh, for Sri Lanka Leeds. So you'll find the recordings of today's session on both of those YouTube channels if you want to revisit anything that was discussed today. Okay. And please do email us in um, at those addresses that we've just given if you've got any other questions. Okay. All right. Shall we wind up there then? Um and uh, any burning questions, please email us in and we'll be in touch. Okay, and Chula, I think you've got a different session um, next Sunday. As yeah, we're continuing topic. every every week anyway. We will advise the topics, yeah. Thank yeah. You. Okay, all right, wonderful. Thank you very much, okay. everybody. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.